Welcome back for another update on the gasifier progress. It's March 20th, about uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Right now what you're looking at is the electrical cabinet that I just recently got mounted. I'm going to walk around the back here. You can see I have some nice rubber mounts holding this thing in place so when things shake around it's not going to affect any of the electronics inside the box. So this piece of angle just bolts to the scaffolding frame and then the rubber mounts sit on that piece of angle. I have a cord running inside here so it gives me the opportunity I'm going to open up this, this door here for a second. I just have this cord temporarily wired to the PLC and it gives me the opportunity to utilize the 24 volt power supply that's internal in the PLC so I could run these pressure sensors, negative air pressure sensors. Now they do have two outputs on them but for right now I just have them wired up with the power just to see what the pressure is going into the back like whatever you apply vacuum wise to this hose on these sensors it reads it on the display of the sensor so I can kinda of see what's going on with everything but just so you see I do have the PLC mounted in place you know I uh, I special ordered a, cu a couple of these cards these are the RTD resistance cards these are for the temperature probes now I have five temperature probes that I'll be using in this system um, this card in particular is only good for four of them so I do have to purchase another card which is why I have an empty spot right here well, right next to that I have an analog input card um, they vary in price like I got the whole rack for like 300 bucks and then I think I got this RTD resistance card for about 150 bucks and then I think this one was I, I forget less than hundred dollars it was I forget what it was I bought it on eBay I bought everything on eBay I also purchased all of these terminal blocks and din rail and wireways and everything on eBay so I got all that stuff mounted now so it's there for when I want to start hooking wires up to that but for right now like I said I just have this temporarily wired off this power supply that's internal to the PLC so I can play with the sensors and see what the vacuum is doing and maybe do some testing on things so for right now I'll close this up and we'll move on here uh, real quick while we're talking about RTDs and stuff these are the pressure sensors I'll show you a shot of this here quick I don't know how clear it is um, I had stuff showing up at my door from all over the world more or less this particular box is from Korea <laughs> but uh, a lot of these RTDs this is what they look like so it has NPT threads on them and there's three wires inside this aluminum cap that unscrews and comes off and those are going to get hooked into those cards in the PLC so the cards basically tell the PLC you know what the temperature is in these different places that they're mounted uh, let me dig through here for a second here these are those these are called duckbill float switches so as this closes and the water level decreases it completes the circuit when the water level rises they float up and it opens the circuit so the PLC will utilize that information whether that switch is open or closed to turn on pumps and I'll show you that in a second let me see if there's one more thing I wanted to show you in here I also have check valves these check valves are also going to be used in the system and I'll show you those in a second I'll show you where they're going in a second here. all right so let me go I'll start off with the air intake you're looking at the air intake here it's just a steel 90 and you see it 90s into a piece of aluminum pipe and there's a rubber coupling that goes between the aluminum pipe and the end cap on the radiator assembly now those rubber couplings are just to keep the gas from leaking out from the radiator to the outside or pulling air in one way or the other but I chose aluminum to go through the inside of the radiator just for the heat transfer it goes through in two places I'll show you that little better shot over here because there's a little more room for me to get at it so you see the aluminum goes straight through the center of this radiator so as the hot gas is traveling around it it's transferring heat to the incoming air so I have rubber gaskets between these plates and everything's nice and bolted tight all the clamps are tight every fitting here 
you know, this was actually a uh, aluminum handrail that came from, I believe, Home Depot. I think it was 35 bucks for, I want to say, an eight foot length of this aluminum handrail. This is what I'm using for my air intake. And I also have a Harbor Freight pipe threader that I threaded the ends with NPT. So it's all one inch. 90s up, back into steel here. 90s back into another aluminum pipe. Again, same setup. Uh, rubber coupler going to the cap. Cap sealing off anything from leaking out. And uh, goes into the radiator. So when you think about this, you have the hot gas coming out of this radiator, traveling up this pipe, and more or less slamming right into that aluminum pipe. Let me get this out of the way here. So it, it hits that aluminum pipe. So like I said, two things are happening. You know, you're transferring heat to your incoming air. And you're also losing heat from the temperature of your gas that's coming out of this. Then, of course, out the bottom of the radiator, it goes into this expansion tank. Now, I have these fittings on the end of this, uh, this coupler that's welded to the tank right here. That's actually going to be part of the sight glass assembly. There's some fittings on the bottom of, it, of the tank that it's going to tie into. So you'll be able to see how much moisture is in this. But again, you're going to have a, one of those duckbill float switches hooked up to this. So when the PLC sees that, you know, the level of water is full. It can also turn the pump on, pump through the check valve. So no air is ever pulled into the system. You're only use, using the, the pump to pump out. So you might, you know, pull gas into the sight glass as opposed to letting air in when you just open a valve and letting it drain out. You know, you don't want air in places it doesn't belong. So. so for right now, I just temporarily have this capped on the top here. This would be the output of the expansion tank. And the reason I have it capped is so that when I do my pressure testing and vacuum testing or however I'm going to do this, um, it gives me the option of, you know, not not leaking air in there. So I have all of these gaskets pretty well done. Everything is pretty much sealed up. Um, going back to an earlier video where I talk about, you know, nothing is set in stone until it's done. Brings us to this point here where you'll see I used to have a door here. And that door was nice and easy to get into. Uh, I really liked that door. And it was a lot of work to make that door with the rope gasket and make everything work right. And I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. But when I did one of my vacuum tests, I wasn't too happy about the air that was leaking in. And I noticed a difference on the gauge on that sensor um, between the vacuum uh, before I taped it and after I taped the door that was there. I put tape, electrical tape around that door did another vacuum test and it made a difference in what I saw in the, in the vacuum. So I thought, well, it's time to go and I made a two inch wide flange and I uh, used this uh, St. Gobain's self stick high temperature gasket material on that two inch flange and I did it in such a way, I wish I could show you what it looks like, but I did it in such a way I actually used, I traced a, like a Thomas the Train Track pattern for the beginning and the end of the gasket so that they mate with each other you know it goes it goes all the way around the whole thing and then where it meets up with itself right over here it has that thomas the train shaped track end on it and then i also put another gasket with the seam down here so it would have to leak through this seam and then all the way around that gasket all the way to here and then through that shape that I have there if it was ever going to leak. So I'm pretty happy with this. You know, I have these studs welded on here on the back side. Very similar how I did the flanges on the top. Probably can't even see them really because it's black paint, but the studs are welded in place, sealed up, and that flange is welded to the gasifier and then this plate just bolts on the outside here. So that's that. Now I talked about the check valves and the pumps and all that stuff. Well, we're looking at our condensate drains right here for the trough that's up inside the lid. And those drains lead to the same place right here. Now, right now they're just into a couple of fittings and that's what it looks like right now. But eventually there's going to be a small container here with one of those duckbill float switches mounted inside of it. And that float switch is going to turn on when it, when it floats up, 
And when the PLC sees that there's water in there, it's going to turn the pump on and the pump is going to pump water out from the inside of the tank that the duckbill float switch is mounted in. So I can pump it out without letting air in again. So that's the plan with that. Um, I do have the gasket done. You can see I have another RTD. These are the RTDs. Some of them are mounted in place already. Um, I have the gasket done on the hopper lid. It's kind of in a hurry to do that one just to get it sealed up. I didn't take as much time to do a nice job on that one as I did on the door down below. Um, but it's done. It's sealed to the point where I could do some testing on this thing. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, I'm going to pause this out. And I'm going to bring you back and maybe I'll do like a quick test here and show you what I got going on. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And you can see I have the PLC plugged in. So it's, it's, it's fault in the flash right now on the PLC. And the reason is because I reconfigured the way these cards are set up. And I don't have the program or the license yet to operate this. Uh, that's another expense down the road. But it doesn't like seeing where the cards are located because it's not where they belong and there's different cards that I added to the system. So that's why you're seeing a fault there. But it is powered up and you can see when I show you this sensor, I just have this sensor just plugged in. Let's see it's reading 0.0, .0 kPa right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up this little vacuum. Now this is kind of a an early stage test here and I have a lot of a lot of bugs to work out with this but if I turn this on, this is a speed adjustment right here on this small vacuum. So first thing we'll do is we'll go over here, take a peek at what this is registering. So it's only showing you minus 0.4 kPa, which is about the, well here, we'll do this first. We're gonna turn the speed up all the way on the vacuum. I'm going to come back over here, and it's showing minus 1.1 kPa. So right now it's basically saying that this is about four, a little over four inches of water that's in the system right now, and I don't know that that'll change much just watching it. So I kind of have to go around and see um, what's going on with the system, because if I know if I hook this vacuum or this sensor directly up off the vacuum, I can get it to read minus 12.5 to minus 13 kPa. So there's obviously something where I'm either leaking air in somewhere or if it's just because of the volume of air inside this tank and you know, all these pipes and everything. So I kind of have to get to the bottom of that. Worst case scenario, I will pressurize this fitting inside the expansion tank and the whole you know, assembly and spray things down with soapy water to see just so I have an idea what's going on. My biggest concern is, you know, gaskets between here, gaskets down here, you know, those kind of things. I'm not concerned about any air leaking in up here because, I mean, it's technically the same as it coming in through, you know, through the hopper if you have the lid open, but obviously the better seal you have, the better, but there's our temperature gauge for the incoming air so we can see how much, how effective the heating, the preheating system is. But that's about all for the progress so far. Obviously, I have a ratchet strap holding my lid down right now. That's something I got to deal with also. But as always, it's work in progress. So thanks for taking the time to watch and uh, I'll keep you guys posted as I get stuff done. Talk to you soon.